Welcome to lesson three, but part two of elements that hinder our relationship with the lover of our soul, Jesus Christ. In the last session, we had four of them. We talked about not walking um, in the spirit. We talked about a life of sin. We talked about willful disobedience. And then we talked about idolatry. That's just for a recap. Now, I want to talk about four more. I did mention that I had eight pinned down. And then these are the last four. The first one I want to, to talk about in this lesson is unforgiveness and bitterness. Hmm. These two go hand in hand. Wherever unforgiveness is allowed to linger, bitterness will definitely follow. Jesus, your lover, if he is, cannot survive in an atmosphere of unforgiveness. You will send him packing. And if you do so, then you can't develop and maintain a relationship with someone who is not present in your life. You can't develop a relationship with an absent person. And unforgiveness makes Jesus absent in our lives. Bitterness makes Jesus Christ absent in our lives. Unforgiveness in simple terms is refusing to forgive someone, someone else, or even yourself, um, because of a past encounter that wasn't too good. If you live in unforgiveness, your thoughts become malignant cancer cells and they will eat you up. When you hear a tumor is malignant, that's nothing to smile about. That is death knocking at the door. If something is not done about it, if there is no miracle about it, that's how unforgiveness is. It kills the person eventually. It does not kill the person you refuse to forgive. It kills you who abhor the unforgiveness. So this is not anything to joke about. Did you even know that unforgiveness and bitterness have been proven to cause physical sicknesses as well, such as anxiety, depression, high blood pressure, heart disease, a lowered immune system. So sometimes when things are going wrong and you have no idea, I think it's time to have a heart check, a spirit check to know if there is something spilling from your emotional life or your spirit life into your physical life. Apart from these sicknesses, of course, unforgiveness is a good way to open your arms wide and welcome the devil into your life and your heart. And we know Jesus and the devil cannot coexist in the same life at the same time. One has to bow for the other. You cannot also please two masters at the same time. Now, someone may be wondering if I'm referring to the devil being a master and Jesus being a master, since I said you can't serve two masters at the same time. My answer to that is yes, and I would explain. The devil is a master of evil. He has mastered his craft. When somebody masters anything, they master in that area. So yes, he is also a master in his own way. But Jesus Christ is also the master of light, before whom all other masters bow. Just like in the League of Kings, kings differ in dominion and power, and some kings are subject to another king. The Bible says that let every soul be subject unto higher power. So Satan's soul is actually subject to your lover's power. There is a lot to cover on the issue of unforgiveness and bitterness, but dear minister's wife, the consequence of living in unforgiveness and bitterness is too great a burden to bear. It's not something you should carry. I know many minister's wives deal with this particular issue. And it's not surprising to know the people they hold in their hearts may even be their minister husbands who might have offended them knowingly or unknowingly. Um, different people in their lives who are around them because they, they feel there is nobody to speak to. And then they bottle all these things and begin to live in, in resentment, in bitterness. But I would want to encourage that we treasure the relationship that we are building with the one who bought you to himself with his blood. Paying the price of, of blood is a very serious thing to consider. Most times the reasons 
someone is bitter is very legitimate when you hear those reasons or they have a real good reason to be bitter, to, to be upset, to refuse to forgive. And it's painful sometimes to let some of these offenses go. But let the blood shed on the cross of Calvary be the reason. In fact, let it be the only reason you will forgive and refuse to live in bitterness. If many of us were Jesus, we definitely wouldn't forgive those who beat us, those who spat on us. These are things that Jesus Christ went through to redeem us, to purchase us with his own blood. He was spat on, he was beaten, his skin was ripped apart. A thorn of crown, a, a crown of thorns rather, was put into his head. He was mocked publicly, yet he still decided, you are worth dying for, I am worth dying for, and purchasing us from the slave market and redeeming us to himself with his blood. And that, he needs to be our perfect example. If he did it, you and I can as well. We just need the grace from him to be able to do that. And I pray that that grace will be made available to us and we will make it in Jesus' name. The second element I want to mention here um, in this lesson is wrong motives. Some motives are very wrong for developing a relationship with Jesus Christ. Never develop or maintain your relationship with the lover of your soul, Jesus Christ, because of the things he can do and the things he gives. That is a very wrong motive. Do not have a trade by butter system relationship with him. If you decide to develop and maintain a relationship with Jesus Christ because you're a minister's wife, you'll be rudely disappointed. Forget for a moment that you're a minister's wife. Forget that you carry a title. Forget for a moment that there is an anointing on your head. Forget also for a moment that people look up to you. If your motive for loving him is not pure and for no other reason, other than you want to know him, you want to enjoy his presence and his person, then that motive you have is a wrong one. Now, let me balance this. Am I saying you should not ask him for anything that you need? No. Am I saying you shouldn't ask him to give you this or give you that? That's not what I am saying. What I'm saying is that don't let the basis of your walk with him be because of what he gives, what he does, but first, who he is. You need to know him on a personal level. Imagine if God decides that he was not going to give anything to anybody anymore in the world. Would you still chase after him? Imagine if he decides he would never answer your prayers anymore. Would you still want to pursue him, have a relationship with him? So that is where I want you to take it from. If you are in a truly loving relationship with your spouse, for example, and your spouse who is prone to errors, your spouse who is still mortal, and um, there are things that as a wife, you would never have to ask your husband. As long as it is within his power to do it, you will get it from him without even you asking. Now, can you imagine being the wife of love himself? Can you imagine being the bride of the one who has zero errors and who has all the might, who has all the capacity, who has all the ability, who has all things under his command and control? Would he not freely give you all things as well? So let your motives for loving him be pure. Let your motives be, God, Jesus Christ, even if you do nothing for me, I still want you. I still want to have a relationship with you. Number three, prayerlessness. James 4.2 says, Ye lost and ye have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because you ask not. Prayer is communing with the lover of your soul. It's a two-way conversation with Jesus Christ. If we want a great relationship with Jesus, then ask in prayer as well. There is nothing too big or too small, too irrelevant or too relevant to take to God in prayer. 
So if you desire to have a relationship with the lover of your soul, pray about it. Don't be a prayerless minister's wife. In fact, prayerlessness, I've heard a few times, is a show of pride. So pray about your relationship with him. Speak to him about it. We all know what prayer is, so I wouldn't dwell on that too much. Number four is a shallow Bible study life. That's another thing that can hinder your relationship, developing a relationship or maintaining a relationship with the lover of your soul, Jesus Christ. You know that if you want to know me to some extent, um, you can read something I've put out about myself. That is if I'm telling the truth. You know, you can get some information from whatever I put out about myself. Now, Jesus is truth. It's not just that Jesus is telling the truth, but Jesus himself is truth. And his word is true. And Jesus is also the word in print. So when you go to the Bible, when you carry your Bible, when you pick up your, your pick up your Bible and you read every time, you are reading Jesus. You are reading him. You find, um, sometimes you may not understand what you're reading from the Bible. Sometimes you do, but don't stop anyway. You find that some things are deposited in your subconscious mind and in times of adversity or when you need a scripture that you never knew was there, those things resurface. They come back to the surface. But you cannot know these things if you do not spend time or invest time in um, the word of God. If you do not spend time with your lover through his word. Remember the person of Jesus is in print in your hands in the Bible that you carry. So read him. You will understand that the one who purchased you with his blood, what he likes and what he hates. The more you read him, the more you know him, the closer you get to him. So as I said, there are several other elements that can hinder developing a relationship with the lover of our souls, but I'll end this here. I've mentioned four in the past lesson and then four in this lesson as well. So update that list that you have personally written. And if there are areas to work on, work on them. Nobody is perfect. Everyone has an area of their lives where they are working on. They may not tell you, but everyone is working on something. No matter how anointed they are, there is still work. We are all still work in progress. And all of this knowledge is for nothing if you do not apply them to your life. So I encourage that we apply all of these things to our lives. In our next and final lesson for this course, I'll be highlighting some steps to developing and maintaining a relationship with Jesus Christ, the lover of your soul. See you in the next lesson.